Hi guys, my name is Tria and I am a junior doctor working in London. I graduated from the University of Oxford in 2022. Today I am going to be talking about how much it actually costs to become a doctor in the UK. So that will include tuition fees for undergraduate medicine in the UK and move on to postgraduate fees, exams and all the hidden costs, which there are many. I'll also be discussing salary, so stay tuned for that. So I'll be talking about the UK specifically and I hope this will be useful if you live in the UK or you are considering coming here to study medicine. Okay, so let's get into the video. I thought I'd start by answering some common questions. Let's start with a popular one. How much is medical school? In the UK, medical school is not free in most cases. Undergraduate medical school lasts between five to six years. The medical degree is actually five years long and that is to get your MBBS or equivalent degree. This means that you are a doctor. Some courses in the UK also have an additional sixth year, which they do an intercalated degree, which is usually a BSc or in the case of Oxford, a BA. How much is it? For home students, so that's UK residents, each year the tuition fee for medical school is £9,250 a year. And for international students, this varies. You can expect to pay anywhere between £20,000 and £50,000 per year for tuition for international students. So this is a lot of money, but there are certain exceptions. For example, for UK residents, they have to pay the tuition fee for the first four years, but from the fifth year onwards, UK students can get the tuition fee covered by an NHS bursary. So essentially, the NHS, which is the National Health Service in the UK, pays for your final year of medical school. So there's a useful website which you can compare the different fees for the different medical schools as an international student. For example, for Oxford, the fee for international medical students is £43,670 per year. Now this is just for tuition, remember. Whereas for Cambridge, it's £67,194 per year. Be aware that there can be a big difference between the medical schools. So that may factor in into which medical school you want to go for. But if you are a UK resident, then you'll be paying the same regardless of which medical school you go to. So it's really important to remember that this is the tuition fee only. So this cost doesn't include anything else apart from tuition. This doesn't include all the maintenance fees such as accommodation, food, travel and other expenses. Depending on which city you live in, this could be anywhere from £1,000 to £2,000 a month. In big cities like London, where rent prices are really high, this is going to be a significant expenditure. Now, some rich universities can subsidise the cost of living for their students. For example, Oxford is a really expensive city to live in for most people, but the colleges are so rich that they can somewhat subsidise the accommodation and the food prices for their students. And now this is one of the advantages that I found of going to Oxford. So in terms of how to pay, some people pay the tuition fees out of their own pocket, but it's very common for people to get student loans. If you're a UK medical student, then you can apply for a government loan that can cover the tuition fees and also can give you some money for maintenance as well, a tuition fee loan and a maintenance loan. There are also lots of scholarships and grants available for international students. This can be from the universities themselves or different private organisations and companies. For example, one of my close friends in Oxford studied maths. Her and her twin brother brother both studied maths in Oxford and her brother's tuition and maintenance was paid completely by a private company so their parents really essentially got a two for one deal. There are also some hardship funds and bursaries available for people who come from lower income households and some universities offer their own needs-based scholarships and grants so it's really important when you're deciding where to apply to look at the individual university websites and also for some more general websites with some advice. I'll leave some important links down below. So to recap, to get through medical school for tuition fees if you're a UK student it's £9,250 per year plus maintenance which may be anywhere from five to £2,000 a month. If you're an international student, this fee goes up and your tuition fee can be anywhere from £20,000 to £50,000 a year plus maintenance. Now you've graduated, congratulations, you are now a doctor. And now in order to have a full license to practice medicine, you have to go through training and this starts with foundation. So the costs do not stop here. The good thing obviously is that once you have graduated from medical school, you will be earning a salary. Now, if you've been following healthcare news in the UK, you know that junior doctors have been on strike and one of the reasons is the pay. I think it's up to you to decide whether you think that junior doctors are adequately reimbursed for their time and their expertise. As a 
junior doctor, you will get paid a salary which goes up every year. The exact salary that you will get paid is variable and depends on where in the country you're working, what your on-call rota is like, and how much extra work that you do. The British Medical Association website outlines the basic pay for different grades of doctors in the NHS. So if we have a look at this, then it says the FY1s are paid £32,398 per year. I presume that this does not include things like on-call pay and also any kind of extra pay you get for working in a certain part of the country. For example, you get a pay boost if you're working in London, but you can expect to be paid something like this. So it's great, you are now earning a salary, but that's not the end of the cost that you have to become a fully trained doctor. Let's get into the extra costs that are associated with being a doctor. One of the biggest costs for doctors in postgraduate training, so this is doctors that have finished medical school and are now training to be a specialist or a consultant in a specific field. This is postgraduate exams. Now, every doctor in training has to complete a certain number of exams in order to complete their training and to be known as a consultant. These are usually written papers followed by clinical examinations or OSCEs. Now, they're compulsory and you have to pay for them yourself. For example, let us say that you want to be a cardiologist. Now, there are three postgraduate exams you have to take in order to do this. That is the MRCP part one, part two, and PACES, which is a clinical exam. Now, if you have a look at this, this is the current fees for the exam. £489 each for part one and part two if you are a UK doctor and £655 each if you're an international doctor. And then for PACES, which is the OSCE and the final part of the exam, you will have to pay £698 if you're a UK doctor and £1,278 if you are an international doctor. Now this is pretty expensive and you'll have to pay this out of your own pocket. Now these exams are notoriously difficult and it often takes people more than one go, which means you'll have to pay the price again and again. So not only are the exams compulsory, but then you have to pay for them yourselves. I'll let you decide whether you think that's all right or not. And I, I don't know about different careers, but I, but I presume it is similar for other postgraduate exams, for example, in law or other fields. Now let's talk about some of the hidden costs associated with being a doctor. For example, a stethoscope. Now this can be anywhere between 80 and 200 pounds, even more than that if you want a very fancy digital one. Now the cost of your stethoscope may be reimbursed by a medical school, so look into that, but otherwise it's a pretty hefty purchase. A big one is travel. So as a medical student and as a postgraduate doctor, you will have to work in rotations where you are rotated between various different hospitals. Now the hospitals that you get sent to may be district general hospitals, which are further away than the main hospital that your base is. And often you're expected to cover the cost of travel yourself. Now you may have some or all of it reimbursed, but the onus of doing that is on you. Another hidden cost is the cost of study materials. For example, textbooks. Now textbooks can be tens and hundreds of pounds each. Now thankfully most libraries have physical copies or online copies of important textbooks, but there may be some extra textbooks or study guides that you want to buy for yourself. For example, the Kumar and Clark textbook, which I think is one of the most fundamental for medicine, is about £56 to buy online. Now, one thing which is almost mandatory for medical students and postgraduate doctors alike is a subscription to a question bank. Question banks are revision tools that are really useful and really common. Many of the exams that you will have to do as a medical student and a doctor will be multiple choice questions and question banks are a really great resource to help you practice this. So there are some very common websites such as PassMed, PassTest and so on that offer subscriptions for students and for postgraduates sitting these exams. They obviously all have fees. For example, a passman subscription for medical school finals is £20 for six months or £30 for the year. Now that's not a huge amount of money. Lots of people subscribe to more than one question bank, so it does add up. Now the next few things I'm going to talk about are ones that I had no idea about until I became a doctor. One of them is registration to the General Medical Council or the GMC. In order to be a practicing doctor with a license in the UK, you have to be on the GMC register and this incurs an annual fee which is actually very expensive. For example it's £455 for doctors with a license which is doctors who have completed their first year of postgraduate training known as F1. So that is an ongoing fee that you have to pay every year and that is compulsory. Another fee which you may have to pay and this one is definitely optional is the subscription for a trade union. So the doctors trade union in the UK is called the BMA or the British Medical Association. Now this 
has a subscription fee which is monthly or annually and it's £41.58 a month for most doctors or subsidised if you are a doctor in your early years of training or if you're working less than full time. Now there's lots of reasons for and against being part of a union such as BMA and I'll leave that to you to decide whether you think it's worth it or not. Another thing to think about is being part of a medical defence union so that will allow you to get legal advice if something goes wrong in your practice. So this is kind of like having an insurance and you hope never to have to use it but there may be times when you will have to unfortunately. Another subscription from this varies from 10 to 50 pounds a year from what I've seen. And then on top of this there are lots of other optional courses that you may need to go on to improve your CV and to improve your skill set. This could be professional courses such as courses that teach you certain skills like ultrasounding or suturing skills or other different surgical techniques. So these may not be compulsory on paper but you may need to have these skills in order to progress in your career. Now if you're lucky and you're part of a training program that has a generous budget you may get some money back for exams, these different courses, but that really depends on where your training and you can't always guarantee that that money will be there for you. As you can see there are lots of costs involved in becoming a doctor. Some of them are pretty obvious such as tuition fees and exam fees but then there are some hidden costs such as equipment, special skills courses, trade unions, defence unions and so on. There are lots of estimates at how much it is in total. For example one website says that the cost of being a doctor can be up to £312,645 for international students and £124,895 for UK students. Now that's a lot of money. On top of it being a lot of money, it's a lot of your time and your effort as well. Now, I guess the killer question here is, is it worth it? Do you think that being a doctor will make up the money that you have put in and it will give you a fulfilling and happy life? That's a great question. And I have a video talking all about that. So you should go and check that out. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, let me know and I will see you in the next video.